Hi, second graders. I hope you, this uh, video finds you well and safe and healthy at home. Uh, I wish I, we could be doing this in the classroom um, just so I could see all your faces. I miss you guys, um, but we'll get into our May Ag lesson. So today we're, we're going to talk about Nebraska agriculture and what the different crops that Nebraskans grow and livestock that we raise, the different pieces of Nebraska that make up our ag make up agriculture. And agriculture is Nebraska's largest industry. So it will be exciting to explore some of this with you. So we'll go ahead and, and take a look at this PowerPoint. And we'll talk a little bit about Butler County agriculture too. So here we have a map of Nebraska. And so if you think about Nebraska in three parts, this would be Eastern Nebraska, Central Nebraska, and then the Western Panhandle. So just, I want you guys to take a look at this map and see if you can find Butler County on this map. I'll give you a few minutes, a little bit of time to look. All right, so if you were pointing right here, you are correct. So Butler County is right here between Saunders and Polk. Lancaster, where Lincoln is, is located to our southeast. And then Omaha is located in Douglas County, which is directly to our east. These are some pictures of Nebraska landscapes. So you'll notice that the three pictures on the right look like they could have been taken in Butler County. Very, very similar landscapes to what we see every day driving, um, either back and forth to school or when you're going to Columbus or, or Lincoln shopping. The two pictures um, kind of out in Western Nebraska represent the landscape that's out there. So it's a lot more rocky. They've got some, some mountains, some cliffs, and um, not as green. Um, and we'll see why here shortly. Um, not as green for sure. So you've got some of those bigger rocky hills and then that, this cliff here. So elevation, so this is a topographical map of Nebraska. So down here in the very, very tip corner of Nebraska all the way across the state, Nebraska elevation changes at about 4,000 feet above sea level. So you'll see there's kind of a line um, on this map, you can see it really well, where you start to get kind of out of our green, our green hills, our, our rolling hills into more of the, the rocky, sandy, mountainous areas in Nebraska. So right here, there's quite a bit of, of rocky areas and mountains. Um, not like you would think like the Rocky Mountains or things like that, but just cliffs and, and things like that. Okay, so this, if we think about th this river here, so that goes all the way across the state and kind of comes up here, that is the Platte River. So we would be located somewhere in this area here. Um, just because we go across the Platte River every time we go to Schuyler or to Columbus. So that's the river that you cross going to those two places. So if we look at average rainfall or average precipitation in Nebraska, and um, you, you can kind of see where that line, um, again, is, is drawn here on the map. Whoops, sorry about that. So this line here kind of matches that same line that we find on the topographical map. Um, here in Butler County, we're the two of the darker shades of blue, very uh, lighter shade here, uh, south towards Seward, and then light and then that middle color blue. So looking down here at the legend or the key to the map, we know, can find out that Butler County gets 26 to 30 inches of rain each year. Um, th this is an older map, but it, it still holds pretty true to the precipitation across the state. So you'll notice 
that out here in that far panhandle, they're in the yellows and reds, oranges in terms of how much rain they get. So they would get um, from 20 to under 16 inches of rain. So that's why you'll, that line kind of matches that previous map. We'll switch back real quick. And so you'll see that line is kind of right there in the middle of the state. And then we'll switch back to our precipitation map and you'll see that same similar line just going from east to west in terms of lots of precipitation to not so much precipitation. So we'll talk about Nebraska livestock first before we get into our crops. But um, the livestock that we'll show here are found all across the state of Nebraska, not just in the counties or spots on the map where they pop up. Um, but I, want you, I do want you to think for a few minutes, um, a little bit of time here, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll let you think about what livestock you think are going to show up on my, on my map. And uh, we'll give you some time now to think about that. Maybe think of two or three you think are going to show up, and then we'll, we'll let you get into this map. All right, so you've got your two or three guesses. We will see what's on this map now. So we've got beef cattle. Beef cattle are probably the most prominent type of livestock found in Nebraska. They're found all across the state. Uh, out towards the panhandle, they will, will have more because there's, there's less people, more space for cattle. Something else you'll find all across the state are hogs. You'll also find sheep and goats all around the state of Nebraska. And finally, you will find Chick, po poultry or chickens. So you'll find two types of poultry all across Nebraska, egg layers or broilers, which are meat chickens. So you'll find both. This is just happens to be a picture of a, of a chicken laying on some eggs. Also, we'll find some dairy cattle. Um, there are dairies in Nebraska, not very many, but there still are dairy cattle and dairies in Nebraska. All right, so let's think about, let's switch to crops now, and I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about what types of crops Nebraska grows. So across the state, um, we grow different, many different types of crops. So we'll give you a minute or two to come up with some ideas, uh, some guesses, and then we'll, we'll go forward. All right, so you've got those two or three guesses for our crops. So we grow lots and lots of corn in Nebraska, especially around us when you're driving in the summer, um, you'll see lots of corn fields. But that's a, that's a crop that's found probably from, from here on over into the eastern part of the state, just because out of here in the panhandle, the rain is not quite enough to grow corn. This is probably, about far as far west as you'd find corn, um, kind of that line that we've seen with the elevation and with the the rain, the precipitation map. Next, soybeans. So soybeans kind of say, found in the same parts of Nebraska as the corn is. So we've got wheat. So a little bit further west with that and south with our wheat. Now this is a crop. Um, you may, may or may not have seen it, but it, it's a crop called Milo. So it's typically grown 
here in southern Nebraska, um, kind of where you'll find that wheat down towards Kansas. So out in the panhandle, this is one of their specialty crops. So if you guys have eaten chili or um, any kind of dry edible bean, a pinto bean, a kidney bean, a dried kidney bean, a dried pinto bean, that they grow those out in the panhandle. So any dry edible bean. Also out in the panhandle, they grow sugar beets. So um, you'll sometimes see uh, pictures on the news of the sugar beet harvest. That's happening right out in the panhandle. Scott's Bluff has a major sugar beet processing plant where they take those sugar beets and turn them into sugar to be used. Something else that they grow in the, out in the panhandle are sunflowers. So when you think of sunflowers, you may think of Kansas. Kansas does grow a lot of sunflowers, but they also do grow them in the panhandle. Um, these three crops, your, your dry edible beans, your sugar beets, and sunflowers, don't need that rain. They have, take a different type of soil to grow, so they're better suited to grow out in the panhandle. Other crops that you'll see are potatoes. You'll also see grass hay. So hay to feed our cattle and other livestock through the winter. Uh, a lot of these counties and, and spaces where there's past lots, big, big pastures, um, their crop is hay. They have people that come in and mow the hay. Um, they bale it and then they sell it to other farmers either in Nebraska or outside of Nebraska. Other things that we grow in Nebraska that are, are statewide, are grown statewide, are grapes. We have a lot of winer, small business wineries in Nebraska and we also grow grapes in Nebraska for other wineries outside of the state. So something that we export to other places for use. We have a lot of Orchards, so apples. Down in Nebraska City, there's a big orchard. If you've ever been to the Applejack Festival in Nebraska City, that's kind of what they're famous for. Tomatoes, pumpkins are two other, uh, other crops that we grow a lot of in Nebraska. There's tons and tons of places where you can go in the fall to get pumpkins and kind of do some other activities with your family. Bees. So raising honeybees and producing local honey has become really popular in Nebraska. It's something that I have talked with a lot of people in Butler County about, people in Saunders County. Um, that's kind of an up and coming thing in our, in our area is bees and, and raising them for their honey. And also Christmas trees. So if you've ever went to a Christmas tree farm and cut down your own Christmas tree with your family, that's a crop that is grown, um, that family may use that as like kind of a side income, or if it's a big enough place, they, they certainly can do that all year round. So we'll add in our livestock here so you can get a complete picture of Nebraska agriculture. So we've got our beef cattle, our hogs, our sheep and goats, our chickens, and then also our dairy cattle. So this represents all of the commodities that Nebraska agriculture grows and raises. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about Butler County now, a little bit of specific information. So we talked about elevation and how that changes across the state of Nebraska. It even changes across Butler County. So if we look at Brainerd, they are at 1,673 feet above sea level. David City drops a little bit down to 1,614 feet above sea level. And as you go into Bellwood, it drops quite a bit, about 200 feet, where you guys in Bellwood are at 1,444 feet above sea level. So sometimes you might hear Bellwood referred to as the valley or have heard that from maybe your grandparents or, or parents, 
that's why. So David City, you drop down into a valley to go to Bellwoods. You come down. It, it doesn't feel like that change in elevation is happening, but but it is. It's a gradual change. So like we talked about, our annual rainfall or precipitation is between 26 and 30 inches of rain. And the soils that we have in Butler County are deep. They're well-drained. They're silty soil, which is good for growing crops. And it has some clay in it uh, towards Brainerd, Dwight, and Loma. So in the southern part of the county, you're going to run into some of that clay content, which is it's still okay because it's a small amount of clay for growing crops. Um, but those silty soils that are well-drained really are good for crop crops and crop production. So our top three crops in Butler County are corn, soybeans, and alfalfa. So alfalfa is, is used for hay, so feeding our livestock and, and selling that to other farmers across the state and, and maybe in other states as well. Top three livestock in Butler County, uh, beef, swine, chickens, um, both broilers and egg layers. And I, I would think um, that in a couple years or even maybe next year, if we look at this again, that chicken, those chickens might be up to number two, um, just with all the egg or the uh, chicken houses going in and being constructed around the county. It, it might be number two and it might even be, be tied for number one here before too long with that construction going on. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap that up today. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and keep smiling, um, keep doing your work and working hard and we will hopefully see you guys around this summer um, at the fair or at any of the 4-H workshops, um, but also hopefully be able to see you uh, next year as your third graders. Um, and we'll, we'll see if we can get into some classrooms and, and do some things with you guys then. Have a great day.